Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. I'm James Spann. This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 28th of January. Temperatures warming up in a big way and some severe weather seems likely early Wednesday. So a lot to talk about and let's... First off, look at some of the sky cam shots. These were captured early this morning at the somewhat insane hour of 5 a.m. There's a look at the Clanton City Hall down in Chilton County. To the north, there's the Fayette County Courthouse. And in Dallas County, you look at the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma across the Alabama River. There's your big trough in the western United States. Now that thing is clearly in the, in the American Upper Air Network, so confidence is fairly high on the uh, forecast in the short term. Pretty mild this morning. Those are captured at 5 o'clock. The uh, cool spot, Fort Payne at 45, Tuscaloosa 53. And look at Memphis. They've got 60. So when it's that mild at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, you know it's going to be pretty warm later in the day. And you can clearly see that tongue of warmer air pushing north out of uh, Texas. And we'll be in the 60s today. And low to mid-70s are likely tomorrow. Not a record, but close to it. Here's the uh, watch warning map this morning. We've got some fog issues uh, the, um, over the nation's heartland, some winter weather issues out west and up in the northeast, but around here things are pretty quiet. Of course, our attention will be focused on the severe weather potential. Uh, this is the convective outlook for later today and tonight. We've got uh, no formal risk. There could be some thunderstorms out across the middle of the nation, but tomorrow we've got the standard slight risk from Texas, including Dallas-Fort Worth, almost down to Houston, up through all of Arkansas, the Mississippi Delta, uh, Memphis, St. Louis is involved in that, Paducah, Kentucky, Springfield, Illinois, just south of Chicago. And within that, there is an enhancement over much of Arkansas down toward the Arklatex around Shreveport, Tyler, and Longview, Texas. And we'll keep an eye on things, obviously, to the west. And then on day three, which is Wednesday, there is the standard slight risk for most of Alabama except the northwest corner and points east. And there is no enhancement in this. And, you know, this is one of those deals where the uh, storms are kind of coming through in the period right where day two and three come together after midnight tomorrow night and early Wednesday. So that's the reason for the uh, maps looking like that. And, again, we'll obviously explore the situation in great detail here in just a moment. Uh, rain with this, uh, around one inch. The storm should be moving along in a very rapid clip, so we don't expect any flooding problems Wednesday morning. Let's look at modeling. This is the GFS, the 06Z run, valid at 12 noon today. And this is at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet up. And there's your trough in the west, ridging here. And uh, down below that, the day should be quite mild. A, a mix of sun and clouds with a high in the mid Maybe upper 60s. That'll feel pretty good. Tomorrow, the trough is progressive. But still for us, uh, the day should be mostly dry. There might be a little, you know, spritz in there somewhere. But uh, generally dry. And temperatures well up in the 70s. The, the record high tomorrow is 78. I, I don't think we get there. Low to mid-70s more likely. But still, that's a good 20 degrees above average for this time of the year. You can see how storms will begin to break out to the west uh, tomorrow afternoon. Northeast Texas, Arkansas, southern Missouri, north Louisiana. And obviously, we'll watch that with great interest. All right, this is Wednesday at noon. Again, the trough is progressive. Down below that, the storms are basically exiting the area at noon. Uh, but let's look at the RPM in terms of timing. Uh, first off, answer that question. This is valid midnight tomorrow night. The main squall line is near Memphis. But we note the RPM develops storms ahead of that line into a northwest Alabama. So the window for storms will open at about midnight tomorrow night. Uh, could there be an isolated tornado in advance of that? Yes. Uh, we've seen evidence of a cap, which might prevent that from happening, but there's clearly a chance if storms can get going and that the uh, atmosphere will be somewhat sheared, but clearly the, the big threat's going to be along that squall line. This is 6 a.m. Wednesday. The RPM has the line from near Huntsville down to about Tuscaloosa. Uh, it's already over up in the shoals at 6 o'clock, so that's obviously going to be kind of a nasty commute. 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. The line is from near Heflin to Montgomery. And again, the rain is ending back up in northwest Alabama. And then by 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, the uh, squall line is down in southeast Alabama around uh, uh, 
Phoenix City and Troy and Andalusia and moving steadily to the southeast. So I think that timing is about right for us in this part of Alabama, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden, we'll say midnight to 10 a.m., something like that, with a really core threat with that line probably, you know, 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Let's look at some severe weather parameters. This is the instability. This is the lifted index where you see the green shades. Uh, That means that the air is unstable. And uh, the one good thing about the timing, obviously it's going to come through at a time of day when the air is more stable, which again would reduce the threat of those discrete storms developing out ahead of that line. Still, it could happen, but again, that's a good thing. This is the bulk shear between the surface and 925 millibars. And we look at this number a pretty good bit to determine the tornado threat. Uh, And this is valid at 6 o'clock Wednesday morning. And generally speaking, those numbers are okay, but they're kind of out of phase with the squall line. Uh, And that's one reason we're thinking the tornado threat is not overwhelming. And again, let me make make it perfectly clear. There is the chance we could see a few tornadoes here, but... Uh, I think wind is the main issue, and this is one reason why. This is the 850 millibar winds. Uh, This is about 5,000 feet off the ground, and they are howling up there, 70 and 80 knots. And it's not going to take a lot to transfer that down to the surface. So uh, I honestly think the big issue with this will be strong, maybe damaging straight line winds along the line. Uh, Winds easily in many places could gust to over 40, 50 miles an hour. So you'll need to batten down the hatches Tuesday night. Um, And even away from the storms, you know, in advance of them early uh, Wednesday morning, it could be windy, uh, you know, 30, 40 mile an hour gusts, something like that. So the bottom line is a squall line, potential for damaging straight line winds early Wednesday morning. The really core threat will be from about 3 until 9 a.m. An isolated tornado not out of the question. And the good news, it ends pretty quickly, and after that, we turn colder. So let's go to Thursday, a different kind of day. Uh, Temperatures will drop a good bit. Now, if this is right, we'll have a hard time getting out of the 40s. Other runs have shown highs in the 50s, but clearly Thursday will be sunny and colder, and Friday will be, uh, uh, again, a, a seasonal kind of day, sunny and chilly in the morning and highs in the 50s. All right, what about the weekend, you ask? There's a look at Saturday. Uh, Again, 50s and 30s, that is exactly where we should be. Looks like a little front coming in north and west of the state. See that surface boundary up there, but I think it comes through in dry fashion, maybe a sprinkle Saturday night, and then Sunday a reinforcing surge of dry air sets in here. And again, that is very seasonal. Average highs, 50s, average lows, 30s here this time of the year. That's exactly what we should have this weekend. Go to next week on Monday, a short wave north of here. Uh, Looks like a system that's going to stay north. Go out there and check the... uh, Later periods, this is the 8th of February. That's an interesting look right there. Uh, 1041 high at Denver. And it looks kind of icy on the northern flank of that precipitation mass, if this is right. On the 11th, there's a storm system. The surface low is north of us, so that's a, a stormy look instead of an icy look there. And finally, the end of the forecast on the 12th. Trough passing by, some cold air coming in, but there's not really a big high amplitude look to bring some brutally cold air down in here. So far is what we see. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog next video here by 4 o'clock today. And don't forget to watch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on our live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. Be sure to catch the next episode of Just Talking It Up on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. Hey, you forgot our names. No. You did? You forgot our names. Don't be silly. I'm Janet. You're a crash. See? (laughs) She's just like a goose. She wakes up in a new world every day.